I have worn a white t-shirt almost every day for a decade. And I can still count on one hand the amount of people who have ever told me that they noticed. And for the record, another white t-shirt. And for the record, another white t-shirt. 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 And for the record, another white t-shirt. In middle school, I peaked socially. I was a social butterfly. The highlight of my weeks was playing airsoft with my brothers, hanging out with the kids in the neighborhood, and going to church. I loved being around other people. But freshman year of high school, that all went out the window. Because freshman year of high school, genetics kicked in, and I developed acne. It took over my face and much of my upper body. It took away any sense of confidence I might have had, and put me in my head for most of my high school years. Anytime I talked to anyone, no matter who they were or how attractive I found them, I couldn't stop thinking that they only saw me as an overly tall 15-year-old who was covered in zits, not as this 15-year-old kid named Spencer who was struggling with something that was completely out of his control. By junior year, I felt that I'd done every home remedy. I'd gone on diets. I had stopped <laughs> And I had more topical creams in my cabinet than I cared to admit. But nothing I tried had any lasting effect on my acne. I remember the day it hit rock bottom. I had this green billabong shirt. It was one of my favorites. This day, before school, I took it out of my drawer to put on. But the shoulders had been so badly stained from the chemicals and the topical acne medication that the shirt was turning yellow. Despite being over six foot tall, I was terrified that if I wore this shirt to school, that a fellow classmate would see the stains and point them out. That someone would verbalize my biggest fear that all these sores on my face that were also quickly covering my upper body was all anyone saw when they looked at me. That they didn't see me as Spencer. That I was just that kid with acne. What's the purpose of knowing his name? It was that day that I decided to wear a white undershirt that was usually safe to wear with my nice clothing at church. These were the only shirts in my drawer that my acne medication did not stain because they were white and contained no logos. By the time senior year came around, I was ready to rip the skin off my face. My acne was now reaching a level of scarring. I would have a cyst show up and go away, but the divot that it made in my skin no longer disappeared. This was when my parents took me to a new doctor, and this doctor diagnosed me with modern cyst acne that would develop into severe if it wasn't treated quickly, and as a result, prescribed for me a drug called Accutane. I had never heard of Accutane, but my dad had because my dad had done a medical trial for Accutane as a teenager back in 1982, because his acne was even worse than mine. Now, Accutane is not something to mess around with or take without thinking about the consequences. The first thing the doctor told me about Accutane was that it only had a 50% chance of success. Next, she told me about how over the next four months, I would see my body break out like I'd never seen it before. The Accutane will push all the dormant acne to the surface of my skin. My skin will crack, my lips will bleed, and I will probably have suicidal thoughts. It was also required to take a monthly blood test to make sure my liver was not failing due to the drug. And don't forget, there was only a 50% chance of success. But for me at the time, I would have given up nine out of my 10 toes for a body that was acne free. Because there wasn't an hour in my day that I didn't think about my acne. Every time I put on a football helmet, I felt it. Every time I put on a shirt, I felt it. Every time I smiled, I felt it. It didn't feel like I was alive. I felt that I was trapped inside someone else's body, looking down on me from above, unable to be myself. During the first month of Accutane, not much changed. But during the second month, my face started to rupture. I remember the worst day, waking up and walking into the bathroom. I counted 20 new zits that had reached the surface of my skin compared to I went to bed the night before. But I was okay with it because that was exactly what the doctor told me was going to happen. This was all in the plan and I felt a sense of control. Around four months, I started to look in the mirror every morning and I began to see a face with less acne than the day before, something I had not seen in the past four years. I started to see my acne fade away. 
Seven months into the treatment, my acting was gone. The problem that I'd struggled with for a majority of high school, this problem that had defined me as a young adult, had disappeared. I began to gain a sense of confidence I had never seen before. I began to feel confident in who I was, something I hadn't experienced since middle school. Now that my acne was gone, I started to notice something. No one seemed to remember how bad my acne was, except for me. I expected friends and a family to come up to me and ask what happened to my acne, but that never happened. It was then, after struggling with and letting acne define me for my high school career, that I realized that no one saw how deep my flaws were, except for me. In high school, I felt as if I was on a soapbox and everyone was seeing all my imperfections and mistakes every time they happened, but they weren't. They were too busy seeing their own imperfections and flaws, dealing with their own high school experience. After my acne cleared, I decided to stay with the white t-shirts. Number one, because white t-shirts match everything and can be dressed up or dressed down, depending on the circumstance. But also because white t-shirts became a way to remind myself to be myself. A reminder to keep the world at a distance and to be independent in body and mind. To never let my life be motivated by what others might think of me. I believe this has directly helped me in finding my way in this world and giving me fulfillment that I never thought possible. Because now I spend my days trying to know myself as opposed to allowing the world to define who I am. At this point, I have been wearing a white shirt almost every day for a decade. And I can confidently tell you that no one notices. Every day I wear the same thing, a uniform, you could call it. And no one cares. And if they do, most people don't care enough to say anything. Sometimes I drive by my old high school and I think about what my high school experience would have been if I never had acne. If that social butterfly would have blossomed in high school instead of becoming dormant, who would I be today? But I wouldn't want to have a high school experience without acne. Because even though I wouldn't wish acne on an enemy, I'm happy in retrospect that I experienced it when I did. So much of my early life was spent in my head thinking about others and how they viewed me. But having acne resulted in a freeing sense of confidence and the wisdom to see that everyone is the protagonist in their life story and they aren't thinking about me. I used to think that I was the most important person in the room, that everyone was watching my every step, that people cared about what I wore and what I did, that all eyes were on my white t-shirt. Acne enabled me to start thinking about the big picture, about what really mattered in life when I was only 15 years old, and that is a gift I am forever grateful for. My white t-shirt and a few acne scars left on my face remind me to think cosmic, and they remind me that whatever I'm going through, that one day this too shall end. And I find a lot of power in that idea, in that reality. I have the freedom to live life like no one's watching, to be all I can be because my soapbox does not exist. I can wear a fanny pack, dress like a European tourist, and ride a scooter with my six foot three frame because you will never catch me. Oh, and for the record, another white t-shirt.